Hey yo peeps, my name is Pablo Picanto and today I will give you a quick overview of the offense heroes in Overwatch, directly out of the open beta. We'll start off with Genji. Genji is a high mobility hero who quickly moves around the map and can attack the opponent from almost every location. He comes with 200 HP. His primary weapon are the shuriken of which Genji always throws three at the same time. However, primary fire throws the shuriken in a straight line, while secondary fire releases them in a horizontal fan formation. Notice that the primary fire takes slightly longer to complete the attack animation. So if you're close to the target and the spread of secondary fire can hit all three shuriken, you should go for that. Genji's left shift ability Swift Strike dashes him forward with a sword strike that deals moderate damage. This ability comes with an 8 second cooldown. The cooldown however is reset if your Swift Strike kills an enemy. This ability can also be used to get around quickly. By aiming upwards you can even get onto higher locations. The E ability, Deflect, as the name says, deflects opponents' projectiles for the duration of 2 seconds and fires them back at the opponent. This, too, has a 8 second cooldown. Genji's ultimate ability, Dragon Sword, makes him draw his sword for the duration of 8 seconds and enables you to deliver high damage blows to every opponent in the way. Notice that while being in Dragon Sword mode you can still use Swift Strike and Deflect. A huge part in Genji's mobility is his passive ability Cyber Agility. This gives you a double jump by simply pressing the jump button twice. In addition to that you can hold the jump button when you touch a wall to make Genji climb that wall. You can combine these two freely. You can either execute the second jump after the wall climb or you can double jump onto a wall and then go into the climb. His high mobility and hard hitting attacks make Genji a threat that can surprise the opponent from every angle, quickly enter every fight, make the kill and get out again fast if needed. The next hero in focus will be McCree. McCree is effective in short range where he can quickly burst down opponents as well as in long range, as he is a very accurate shooter. He comes with 200 HP. With primary fire, his Peacekeeper Revolver fires single shots out of a 6 round magazine that deal a high amount of damage. These are quite accurate, giving you the opportunity to make long range shots and even headshots. In secondary fire, McCree shoots all the remaining bullets in the gun, so 6 at the maximum, in rapid succession. Of course you need to bear the recoil in mind as uncompensated shooting will make your shots go higher and higher. If you counter the recoil with your mouse though, you can get to a relatively accurate shot pattern. This way the secondary fire can even be quite effective at mid-range and might be a good choice to use on rapidly moving opponents to get some shots in. McCree's left shift ability makes a good combo with the secondary fire. On pressing left shift he performs a dodge roll and completely reloads his weapon in the course of it, meaning you can go for a second burst right away. This has an 8 second cooldown. The E ability adds even more to that combo as you can throw a flashbang that stuns the opponent for a short second, giving you the opportunity to get a 6 round burst in. Using a dodge roll to reload directly after and bursting a second time can bring down the tankiest opponent or multiple opponents depending on the situation. McCree's ultimate ability Dead Eye puts him into deep concentration and lets you only move slowly. You now have 6 seconds to get as many enemies as you can in your sight as McCree locks onto every target on screen. On pressing the fire button every marked enemy who remains in direct field of view is killed instantly from right to left. You know a target is locked when the aim circle moved in on the opponent and a red skull appears on that target. That takes about one second. If an enemy moves out of sight while being locked on, the lock on timer will stop. As soon as the enemy is in sight again, the lock on resumes where it stopped. 
Be aware that as soon as you take the shot, every lock on timer running will stop immediately, so be sure not to pull the trigger too hasty. McCree's mobility may be limited, but his ability to put out high damage bursts as well as his multi-enemy insta-kill ultimate makes him a dangerous guy to meet on the field. Next hero is Farah. Farah is capable of putting out high damage and combines that with one of the highest mobilities in the game. She comes with 200 HP. Farah's rocket launcher has loaded 6 rockets that deal a high amount of damage on direct hits as well as a little lower damage on a certain blast radius. The rockets are very accurate in long range as they fly in a straight line until they hit something. Their relatively slow projectile speed makes it possible to dodge them in long range though. Bear in mind that your rocket's explosions harm yourself too if you get too close. You will lose up to 40 HP on one of your own explosions. The secondary fire activates a hover mode, in which you can hover near to the ground. You can press and hold down the secondary fire button as well as the jump button to activate the hover mode. Hover mode's fuel will last for about 2 seconds and recharge again in 2 seconds. Of course you can tap the hover button for shorter boosts to better control your flight and last longer in the air. Farah's left shift ability Jump Jet launches her into the air. This ability has a 10 second cooldown. You can combine that with the hover and attack your opponents from above. Concussive Blast is the E ability that fires a wrist rocket. On explosion its shockwave launches enemies away from the blast. This can be especially useful on maps that have edges where you can fall off. Though Concussive Blast does not do any damage on the enemy's HP, it damages shield and barrier abilities of enemy heroes. This comes with a 12 second cooldown. Farah's ultimate Barrage unleashes a storm of rockets that goes down onto the area you direct your aim to and deals devastating damage. This lasts for 3 seconds. Notice that Farah will stay exactly in that spot where you start the ultimate be it on the floor or in mid-air. You can only move your aim. Her ability to reach every point on the map quickly, stay above the battlefield and rain down heavy damage on the enemy makes Farah a dangerous threat to always keep an eye on. Next up is Reaper. Reaper is a close range hero that is easily able to burst down the tankiest hero if he gets a few clear shots in. He comes with 250 HP. His Hellfire shotguns do a hell of a lot damage. Being the shotguns that they are, they are increasingly effective the closer you are to your target. Going mid range already leaves you with a significant loss of damage output. Close range makes the most of your 8 rounds in the magazine. Most enemies will not nearly be able to tank all 8 shots. Left shift activates Wraith Form. This ability makes the Reaper invulnerable and slightly faster for 3 seconds. You can use it to dodge incoming damage or to safely get close to your opponent to put maximum shotgun damage into him. This has an 8 second cooldown. The E ability activates Shadow Step. This is basically a teleport. You will see a small black whirlwind on the floor that marks your teleport location. On clicking on a target location a short animation will start and Reaper will appear in that spot. This ability can carry you quite far. You can also aim higher to get onto high grounds to ambush enemies from above or get into range of enemies shooting from above. Bear in mind though that you will stand still for a second when the teleport starts and when you arrive at your location, leaving you wide open for enemy fire. The whole animation will take about 2 seconds. Your opponents will also be able to see your teleport marker, so they will know that a reaper is about to jump in. So if you can, initiate shadow step out of cover and into cover, or behind the enemy's back. Shadow step has a 10 second cooldown. Reaper's ultimate, Death Blossom, will deal massive damage to all nearby enemies. The ultimate will last 3 seconds. Remember the shotgun law also applies here. The closer the opponent is, the more damage he will eat. Finally, there is a quite useful passive ability to Reaper. 
any fallen enemy will drop a soul orb that heals reaper for exactly 50 HP. You don't even have to make the kill yourself. Every opponent dying will drop one orb for you. Reaper is a very popular hero because he hits that hard and he's definitely great fun to play. However, if you go too much YOLO mode, you will die rather quickly. Out of the tutorial comes Soldier 76. He is a good all-rounder and probably the best choice if you're new to the game. He comes with 200 HP. His fully automatic pulse rifle has 25 shots per magazine and is very accurate for short and mid-range. For long range you might want to go for burst fire to get the best accuracy results. Secondary fire mode will fire helix rockets that deal a good amount of damage on a direct hit. In a small radius the detonation will also put out a little damage. This ability has an 8 second cooldown. On left shift you will find a simple sprint. Soldier 76 will sprint over any distance you like, as you know it from most first person shooters. No cooldown on this one. In order to fire you will have to stop sprinting first. The E ability Biotic Field will create a circle that heals you and your teammates in it. The field will last 5 seconds and heal for about 200 HP over that time. This comes with a 15 second cooldown. Soldier 76's ultimate is called Tactical Visor. To make clear what it does, let's just call it Aimbot from now. Aimbot will do as the name says, it will do the aiming for you. Every shot you fire will hit the target with 100% accuracy. That will last 6 seconds. Reload speed will be increased in that time. Soldier 76 will automatically switch to the next target if the current one dies or disappears behind cover. There are some limitations however to this ultimate as only targets in the blue circle on the center of your screen will be aimed at. Also, aimbot will go for body shots only, not for headshots. Helix rockets will not be guided by this ability. They go where you actually aim at. All that taken into account, Soldier 76 is a simple but effective hero that performs well on every battlefield. Last offense hero of the game is Tracer. Tracer is a squishy but evasive hero that dashes around like a rabbit, confusing the opponents by never staying in one place. She comes with no more than 150 HP. Tracer uses two rapid fire pulse pistols that together put 40 bullets into the target in about a second. They are effective at close range, anything above that they lose effectiveness quickly. Secondary fire and left shift ability are actually the same with Tracer. You can choose what you are more comfortable with. That ability is called Blink. On activating Tracer teleports a short distance forward. You have three charges on that ability, indicated by the three arrows in the middle of your screen. Each charge has a 3 second cooldown. The cooldown counts only for one charge at a time, so if you fire all three charges, it will take a whole 9 seconds to get them all back. This ability is useful to get out of dangerous situations quickly or to blink around the opponent, empty your magazine into him, blink again, attack and so on. If you time it right, you can only use one charge of blink and keep the rest to get out of danger. Notice that the reloading is not cancelled by blink. Furthermore, Blink only moves you forward on ground level, no matter how high you aim. However, jumping first, you might climb small ledges like these boxes here. But that often is a little random. Another useful movement ability is Recall. On E, upon activation, Tracer goes back in time to that very spot she was 3 seconds ago. Along with the location, health and ammo will return to their 3 second past state, making a great possibility to heal yourself after taking damage. The cooldown for recall is 12 seconds. Tracer's ultimate pulse bomb lets you throw or more drop a bomb that detonates after 2 seconds, dealing heavy damage. Notice that you have to get close to your desired drop location because Tracer is not good at throwing. Also notice that the bomb will stick to any surface you place it on, including enemy heroes. And also also notice that you have to get out of the blast radius yourself, 
or the bomb will blast your 150 HP away like nothing. Overall, Tracer is a good mobility hero that because of her evasiveness can get on your opponent's nerves like crazy. Alright, that's it for the offense heroes of Overwatch. I hope there was a little bit of information for you in here and I'd be happy to see you in the next video. Have a nice one and peace out.